Hey everybody, it's Quick Books Made Easy's Quick Tips newsletter. It comes out once a month with a little e-video. It's an email newsletter with a little video in it that gives you a little tip to make your life easier in QuickBooks. And this is February of 2018. I'm your fearless leader, Greg Bosson. Although I'm not really that fearless, I feel fear all the time. Uh, it's okay to feel fear. Just do whatever it is you're afraid of anyway, unless it's something completely stupid. But anyway, I'm also probably not your leader. I don't know why I said I was your leader, but um, I don't know. Maybe I'm leading some of you. Who knows? So let's move on. What is the tip going to be this month? Well, it's February, and many of you have year ends as of December 31, so I wanted to talk about what it means to close the books and then how to do it in QuickBooks. Now, there is no closing of the books per se in QuickBooks. In other accounting packages, particularly expensive ones, you have to close the books, which means every period or every month every year, whatever, uh, you have to close the books and it creates a separate file and there's different files for every year. And it's like, it's not like that in QuickBooks. All the data is in the same file for all your years all together. So you don't really have to do a closing of the books per se. However, there is something that you might want to do. It's under company. In fact, I suggest strongly that you do it. And it's called set the closing date. And I'm going to tell you what it is and why you'd want to do it. And then we'll do it. When you set the closing date, you put a date in QuickBooks and then it basically locks all the transactions on or before that date and it prevents you from editing those transactions from deleting them and it also prevents you from adding new transactions on or before that date now why would you want to do it well because well here we are in February let's say you're done with year-end and you know everything is right you've reconciled you don't want anybody to screw with those numbers because you know they're right. Any transactions on or before December 31, you don't want anybody to screw with it, including yourself. And so what you do is you set the closing date. You put the date, December 31, in our example here, and then it'll, it'll prevent you from doing anything in your books on or before that date. Now, when I say before that date, I mean all the way back to the beginning of time, not just to the beginning of the year. I mean beginning of all years. So it locks it from that point all the way back. All right. So this is something that I highly suggest you do at least every year. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click set the closing date. It's in the company menu. And it's going to take us to these this little preferences tab, which means for those of you that know QuickBooks well, yep, you could have gotten to it by going over to edit and clicking preferences. Preferences are little features that you can turn on and off, but it goes direct to the preference that you're interested in if you go to company and set closing date. All right, so you'll see down here at the bottom Here's where you set the closing date. Date through which books are closed. You can see we haven't set a date. And then you push this button to actually set the date and the password. So let me go ahead and set it. Now, here's where you put the date. What date do you put? Well, whatever date you want to set means all the transactions on or before that date will be frozen and you won't be able to add to them, delete from them, edit, whatever. So a lot of people, they do it every month. At the end of every month, they set the closing date. Uh, some people wait until the end of the year. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. I like to set the closing date every month because I reconcile, make sure everything's fine, and then I set the closing date. So, but it's the end of the year, at least for some of you. Some of you have different year ends, but if your year end is December 31 and it's the end of the year, I will go ahead and set the closing date as December 31, 2017. Now, I want you to understand one thing. You set the closing date after you've got everything taken care of. So you don't really have year end taken care of until late January, early February. Here it is, February 14th. So when you set the closing, it's not like you do this on December the 31st, right before you go partying for New Year's. No, you do it later after you've got everything done. Today's date's February the 14th. I think you can even see it down here at the bottom of your screen here. And on that date, I'm going to sit in front of the computer and then I pick this date. December 31. So then it's going to lock everything on or before that date, not just to the beginning of 17, but all the way from 16, 15, 14, all the way back to the beginning of time. You won't be able to edit or change or add anything. Now, don't freak out. Just as easily as you can set the closing date, you can come back in here and unset the closing date. You can move it up. You can move it back. It's a lock. 
but you have the key. So I could just click OK at this point, and what would happen is if I try to change or edit or delete something on or before that date, I'll get a warning. Well, what do a lot of people do with warnings when it comes to QuickBooks? They just blow it off. So I like to add this extra special thing and put a password. So then what happens is you won't be able to do anything on or before the date unless you put the password in. So I'm going to click OK. And now the closing date is set. So let's see how this works. Let's see. I'm going to go to my chart of accounts list and I'm going to go up to the top here and find a check. Here's a check dated in 16. So it's in the prior year. I'm going to edit the transaction and I'm going to try and change something about it. Okay. Maybe I'll change the account that it's pointed to. I'll click save. Here's the warning. This modification will affect transactions from closed periods and could affect your previous financial reports. Again, if you didn't put a password, you could just click OK and do it anyway. It'd be like a warning, but they're forcing us to put a password here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my password. This is something where it's like, you know, yeah, I really do want to change it. So you can put a password and it'll let you change it. But at least you're thinking for a second before you have to put the password. Because if you do want to do this, you really got to work. You got to put a password. So hopefully it'll force you to think twice before you go ahead and make a change. So I'll click OK and it will let us change it. And the same thing happens if you try and enter new transactions on or before that date. Okay, December 31, 17. Let me try and enter a new transaction. Well, wow, I picked the same vendor. Let me pick somebody else here. All right. And, well, I guess it doesn't matter. So this is right on the closing date. I click save. And again, I get the same warning. And in this case, I'm going to decide not to do it. Okay. Even though we set the closing date and you have this password, invariably, somehow, somebody, maybe you, makes a change anyway. And then when the auditor comes, if you get an audit every year, or maybe the accountant when it's time to do the taxes, they say somebody changed something, the books don't match. So what you can do is go to reports, accountant and taxes, closing date exception report. This report will actually show you any transactions that were changed or deleted on or before the closing date. So that's pretty cool. That kind of helps you find errors that people make. Now, once again, you can go right back in here, and a lot of people do, and they every month, let's say, they change it. In March, when we're done with January, or maybe late February, then we'll set the closing date January. Or we can remove the closing date altogether. It's up to you. And that is it. So closing date, pretty cool. If you have any more questions or any questions about it or you need help with your QuickBooks, just contact us. Go to the website, quickbooksmadeeasy.com. You can also sign up for the newsletter there if you just kind of found us on the web. So you can get this thing once a month. And we will talk to you later.